China, 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 the Middle Kingdom, one of the oldest civilizations in human history, and since the collapse of the Soviet Union, the final bastion of the Red Menace. Not including Cuba, North Korea, Vietnam, Laos, Belarus, anyway. China is once again in the news. This time, not for a trade war, civil unrest, or even starting a potential world-ending plague. You know the one. The one from uh, Max Brooks's legendary novel about a plague of walking corpses. Definitely not that other plague YouTube. Please don't demonetize me. No, this time they are in trouble for conducting high-altitude espionage on a truly insulting scale. Sending the US mainstream media into an absolute feeding frenzy. My gods, the Chinese are spying on us with balloons, the horror, the pain, the disgrace, the shame. <laughs> Watching the reaction of politicians, journalists and the general public to this incident has been, for me at least, the funniest thing to happen this year so far. Cue the memes. <laughs> But in fairness, the last time an enemy nation flew hot air balloons over US soil, they were carrying incendiary bombs to start wildfires, where the second wave intended to carry biological weapons, so I can understand you Yanks being a bit twitchy. And for a couple of reasons we shall discuss, this falls into my historical discipline of aerial warfare as a significant event. So, let's start as always on my channel with a history lesson. This story, rather appropriately, begins during the Age of the Three Kingdoms in China, 1,800 years ago, where the supreme regent of the Kingdom of Shu Han and master strategist Zhu Liang, otherwise known as Kong Ming, took a break from managing a young Japanese musician in modern Tokyo, and pioneered the very first use of hot air balloons in warfare, using small floating lanterns to send messages out of a besieged area, or simply as a signalling device, such as one lantern going up for hold position, two lanterns going up for attack, etc. etc. As such, to this day in China, these lanterns are known as Kongming lanterns, and are a regular sight across Asia at festivals and the like. Since then, the military balloon has gone through an incredible number of evolutions. The French made extensive use of them thanks to the Montgolfier brothers and their pioneering work in aviation, while the United States established the first fully-fledged balloon corps, complete with the first ever proto-aircraft carrier from a converted coal barge. The balloon saw service for both the Union and the Confederacy during the American Civil War, which resulted in a lot of foreign military advisers and observers taking notice, including a young nobleman from Germany by the name of Count Ferdinand von Zeppelin leading to the most famous use of military observation balloons and uh, balloons in general you know zeppelin yeah although he was using it for terror bombing london but that's a whole different story altogether maybe for another video and they were all hanging over the Western Front, spotting for artillery and tracking enemy movements. However, in the age of accurate machine guns and artillery, they were way more vulnerable, resulting in the crews of these balloons becoming pioneers themselves of a strange new invention, the parachute. It would end up saving many lives, as World War I also saw the introduction of armed fixed-wing aircraft, and it was they which would end up replacing the balloon as the primary method of aerial reconnaissance, not to mention the primary destroyer of observation balloons. In a touch of irony, given recent events, it was America's first Medal of Honor winning fighter pilot, Frank Luke, who would specialize in destroying observation balloons, getting the nickname the Arizona Balloon Buster. And just a note on that, most pilots avoided attacking observation balloons as, due to their vulnerability and their gigantic target status, they were also the most heavily defended positions on the front line, usually guarded by an entire regiment of anti-aircraft guns and often with a fighter patrol at high altitude above them. But this, of course, spelled the end for the recon balloon. As why would you waste all your money protecting them when you can just get a plane to fly over and take pictures? And so, during World War II, the balloon was relegated as a defensive measure to block low-flying aircraft, or as a target drone for fighter pilots. And of course, weather balloons and the uh, Japanese balloon bombs, the aforementioned uh, attack on America. Until... We're back, baby, and we are intercontinental. 
All right, so balloons are old tech. We have recon satellites, we have the U-2 spy plane, we have the sexiest aircraft ever built, we have drones, we have international communication networks we can hack, and extensive global spy rings. Why do we need spy balloons? Answer, they're cheap. And that is especially important for the Russians and the Chinese, though the CIA used them too and they used them for a reason. Spy satellites can do most of the work you need balloons for. After all, they can sort of hover in space and go by over and over again as many times as you want, but the problem is satellites are more susceptible to poor weather conditions and that goes for recon aircraft as well, mainly because your intelligence gathering window is just a lot shorter for a supersonic jet or a satellite given the speed that they're going. They whiz past the objective taking photos, and if the objective is covered in clouds, well, tough. While balloons move really slowly, like at one knot, and they can do a more thorough sweep of an area. Furthermore, these conventional systems are generally predictable and easily tracked, meaning you can counter them relatively effectively if you know what you're doing. But with balloons, especially controllable ones like this one, you can be sneaky. In an age before stealth, and even today, the benefits of balloons are they're rather difficult to detect. Not because you can't see them though, I mean for goodness sake this balloon had a full suite of electronics, spy gear, solar panels and a propulsion system allowing it to manoeuvre. The payload component was estimated to be the size of a semi-trailer while the balloon itself was absolutely massive, clearly visible from the ground while at 60,000 feet AGL. No, stealth doesn't come from small size or clever design. Rather, it comes from how slow it is and how it plays into radar, target, saturation. The sky is a lot busier than the average person realises, and so it takes a lot of effort to filter all of the crap out and spot the target. You have to filter out weather balloons, high school science project balloons, random detritus flying through the sky, UFOs, weather anomalies, a big storm, etc, etc. And even then, that assumes you know what you're looking for. If you look at an anomaly and classify it as a weather balloon, you're letting a potential threat slip right through your defences, completely unopposed, none the wiser. The other factor in this, of course, is how air defences and general aviation radars are set up. Surface-to-air missile radars, air traffic control radars, air search radars, AWACS, all of these systems have to deal with target saturation due to them dealing with a controlled airspace, or, in times of war, contested and hostile airspace. As such, they're all configured to track helicopters, aircraft, cruise missiles, ballistic missiles, etc, while knowing who's who. So all of these radars filter targets out that are going too slow or are just not fitting the profile of an aircraft or missile, as to not subject the operators to information overload. I mean, could you imagine you've got missiles and jets flying at you, and you're currently trying to assign a missile to a flock of birds? Yeah, no. Not good. And that's assuming the Chinese haven't used any low observable materials in the balloon's construction itself. But alas, these facts are not discussed or even included in the news reports. All reasonable discussion, as always with the mainstream media, falls on deaf ears as all over the United States, from Bubba and his sister seducing F-150 to the rooms of power itself, panic gripped the nation. How could this happen? Why do we spend all this money only to get spied on by a goddamn commie balloon? Simple. Because we aren't scared of balloons. Most of the military aren't looking for balloons. However, like everything in our collective airspace all over NATO, the United States, Australia, we already knew the balloon was there. We were tracking it the whole time and had assets monitoring it. In fact, we have dedicated radars for tracking high altitude anomalies or threats. Specifically, these! Space Force installations codenamed Pave Paws and Cobra, aka the Phased Array Warning System. North American Air Defense Command's radars designed to track ICBMs fired from the Soviet Union or China at the continental United States. They can track an object the size of a hatchback over 3,000 miles away at insane altitudes. NORAD does not play around. And as the motto for American radar operators so eloquently puts it, in God we trust, all others we track. And they had a beat on this thing as it started approaching North America, rendering this whole debacle pointless. But it does make for a rather funny story, so here we go. Last month, the Chinese launched what they are saying is a weather balloon. Now granted, it very well could be a weather balloon, but even allowing for inferior Chinese electronics and sensors, I refuse to believe a weather balloon needs a payload that big let alone an advanced control and navigation system, not to mention the actual size of the balloon itself. Initial analysis indicates a wide array of sensors and cameras far beyond what a normal weather balloon requires, so I'm going to believe the Americans and the Pentagon on this one. Why they decided to use a balloon instead of satellites, I couldn't say. 
They have satellites, they have recon aircraft that they could dress up as commercial charters. I mean, again, most likely answer, they wanted to get a much closer look at whatever they were aiming at in greater detail than their satellites could provide. Or maybe they wanted to gain electronic intelligence and test US integrated air defense systems. Whatever it was, whatever their motives, the Chinese have now yeeted a balloon at the mainland United States. And so it continued to fly until January 28th when NORAD saw something the size of the Goodyear blimp at 60,000 feet, emitting satellite signals and moving under its own power. Their response was, naturally, huh, seems legit. Commencing tactical assessment. Red Chinese threat detected. So they started monitoring it. Now at this point, people have said, why didn't you shoot it down? And in fact, the president ordered them to. However, the reality is they didn't need to. The moment it entered North American airspace, it wasn't looking at anything sensitive. They were monitoring it effectively and had assets nearby should it become a problem. When it hit the southerly wind currents and intentionally maneuvered over the mainland, however, it began to approach Whiteman Air Force Base, which houses the majority of the US Air Force's B-2 stealth bomber fleet, as well as being rather close to the missile fields housing America's nuclear ICBMs. And thus, it has now become a problem which resulted in the activation of countermeasures. The Pentagon, in their official statement, said they initiated procedures to prevent any potential intelligence leaks as early as February 1st. However, they would not specify what measures were taken, which, if you know anything about coded military speech, most likely means classified electronic warfare capability, jamming transmissions from the balloon, combined with lockdown procedures of all sensitive equipment at the monitored installations. We can't be sure what they did, what special methods they had for countering, this threat, but those are my best guesses. But by now, the citizenry has become aware, asking to shoot it down. Apparently, people in Montana started mooning the balloon, which is wonderful and correct branding for the United States of America. Good on the citizens of Montana. Uh, thank God it didn't happen over the Deep South, because they would try shooting at it despite being far out of range. And again, one must ask, why? Why shoot it down? It can't send out any intelligence. The areas it's surveying are by now locked down completely. Aircraft are put in hangars, silos are camouflaged. What would be the point? Furthermore, you're shooting down a massive balloon holding a literal ton of sensitive metal equipment, which will fall from 60,000 feet. If that hits anything or anyone, it will cause serious damage and loss of life. So the Air Force jammed it, monitored it, and waited for it to cross the eastern seaboard. Now at this point, we really, again, don't need to shoot it down. It didn't get anything important, nor could it transmit the data if it did. But, on the other hand, we would really like to get a hold of all that sensitive Chinese equipment and any intel we can get from it, as well as track what intel they managed to get. And of course, we could stick it to Comrade G, which is always worth doing. And you know, it's the principle of the thing, because... America. America. So orders went out to shoot down the balloon inside American territorial waters in order to secure the debris for intelligence purposes. And it's here where the true hero of the story enters the scene. The F-22 Raptor, the world's finest air superiority fighter, coming in at $200 million per aircraft with super cruise capability and the most advanced stealth of any aircraft ever built that we know of. Its advanced flight control system allowed to perform maneuvers not even dedicated stunt aircraft can achieve while armed with an array of lethal air-to-air -air missiles housed in state-of-the-art internal weapons bays. This titan, absolute incredible piece of warfighting capability, a masterpiece of aviation engineering, is finally ready to see active combat. The battle will be legendary. And its target is one floaty boy. However, that floaty boy has decided to, as they say, float around and find out. And it is now the point in the story where he finds out. On February 4th, Myrtle Beach, Charleston and Wilmington International Airports were temporarily closed as a flight of F-22 Raptors launched from Langley, Virginia with the call sign Frank. Yes. Remember the Arizona balloon buster I mentioned earlier in this video? That's right, they named the flight to shoot down this balloon after America's first Medal of Honor winning aviator famous for shooting down balloons. Beautiful. But this balloon was still at 60,000 feet AGL, which is really, really high. So only the F-22 really has the smash to get up there and kill it. And as they were flying out of Virginia, heading to the Carolinas at maximum altitude, they had to hit the tanker on the way. 
On board, the F-22s were equipped with AIM-9Xs, which may confuse some of you because the AIM-9 is an infrared seeker and the balloon is cold. But the AIM-9X's IR sensor is very, very sensitive and very, very intelligent with all of the latest modernization packages. Not to mention, it can be locked onto a target by radar or the helmet-mounted sight. And it doesn't matter how cold you try and make it, it's still absorbing heat for power and then burning that power to maneuver, which means it's going to be hotter than the cold air at 60,000 feet. But these AIM-9Xs were special in that they had had their warheads removed and set to kinetic. Meaning the mission wasn't even to shoot down the balloon. Oh no. We want all that sweet wreckage and data to land as soft as possible in the ocean. So we can't use explosives or a gun as that could damage what we're after. No, no, no. We sent a $200 million fighter jet armed with a $400,000 missile to not shoot down the balloon, but to pop it. Roll clip. Right, Frank. Frank one, uh, splash one. That is a T kill. The balloon is complete. One is power. Frank one. Season one is she's what appears to be metal chaff cloud. So I guess like metal breaking apart and strewn for now. Red Chinese infiltration unit eliminated. Let freedom ring. You want to know the best part about this? The F-22 Raptor, the monster air superiority fighter designed to destroy the Soviet Air Force single-handedly, the most expensive fighter aircraft ever built, this was its first air-to-air -air kill. That's right, after all of that hype, the first confirmed kill by the Raptor was a balloon. God bless America. In the aftermath of the incident, cases of freedom bonus lasting longer than four hours have spiked while China is throwing a tantrum, as usual, condemning the use of violence as unnecessary while they supply ammunition and arms to a country invading Europe with the aim of a cultural genocide. So, you know, Comrade G, deal with it. As we speak, the US Navy is conducting recovery of the wreckage with guided missile destroyer USS Oscar Austin, guided missile cruiser USS Philippine Sea, and amphibious warship USS Carter Hill performing the heavy lifting, with aid from the Coast Guard and a detachment of FBI counterintelligence agents. And so, 2023's first major memeable event has come to a close, and with that in mind, I shall leave you with the very best of non-credible defense, and of course a reminder, as the appropriate outro music, without the Communist Party, there would be no new China. See you next time.
生活，结识了地母。